Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode on our journey to financial freedom. In this particular video, we're going to be talking or I'm going to be talking about four things. And the four things are my reasons for wanting and, and my wife and I to go after finan financial freedom and why it is so important for us to achieve our financial freedom number. Uh, the second thing is what you can expect along the way. So I'm going to be doing a multitude of different videos, different concepts, different ideas, and I want you to be a part of this. If you're watching this video, I believe that financial freedom is important to you and it is something that you possibly could be tackling. But I want to create a community and a home where we can all come together on a on a weekly, on a monthly basis and basically discuss and go over some of the, the successes, the struggles, whatever the case may be, in order to lean on each other and help each other achieve that financial freedom number. Now, if you have already reached that financial freedom, we also invite you or I would like to invite you because you can provide a multitude of, of, of understanding and coaching that is so important to us who are trying to reach that, that same milestone. The third thing is I want to share with you our exact fire number, the calculations as to how I achieve that fire number, and also look at where we currently are in our investments. That's the fourth thing. I want to open up all of our investments accounts. I want to be very open with you uh, uh, as a community, and I want to share with you where we are as of today, the 9th of November, and basically give you a framework as to where we're starting at and where we're going to. So again, I hope you can subscribe to the channel. I hope this is interesting to you, and, and, and this is a community that you want to be a part of and, and, and grow with, and I look forward to seeing you in, in, the, in the future videos and the future things that I uh, want to do together on, on this YouTube channel. So let's get right into it. So why financial freedom? So as I kind of was saying there in the intro, <coughs> um, as I was saying there in the intro, the, the one thing and the most important thing that I believe is so important to my wife and I is learning the journey so that we can teach our children, our family, and our friends and individuals uh, that would like to learn the process of achieving financial freedom. You see, I, if you've been watching the channel, you might know if you're new to the channel. Uh, back in April of 2018, I was uh, a little over $100,000 in debt. And so I am very comfortable. I am very knowledgeable uh, in, in the process of getting yourself out of debt. I know how to go from negative to whatever to zero. That, that is something that I have conquered. That is something that I have achieved. And that is something that I have personally went through on my own that I can share with you real life experiences, um, and feelings that go through that process of digging yourself out of out of debt. But what I can't go over with you as of just yet is how to get to that financial freedom number. I'm in the process and I'm in the journey of trying to achieve that milestone. And so I want to be able to, in a couple of years, look back and say, I went through that process, I went through that journey, and this is the steps and this is what is needed in order to overcome and make that um, a reality for your family and your situation. So I believe that is the number one reason why it is so important um, for us, and I'm speaking a little bit me now passionately, passionately about me or, or my reasoning. Uh, the second reason is I don't want a life without um I want nice things. I want to be able to take nice vacations, do things with my family. And so I want a life that is not dictated on if we do this, we can't do that. If we do that, then we can't go over here. One vacation a year, let's pick the best place. I, I don't I don't want to have a life like that. I don't mind, and I'm, I want to be very clear with it, I don't mind sacrificing for these next five, six, seven years in order to build for that life. But come the time when we hit that financial freedom number, excuse me, I do not want to have to live a life that is all about choosing one or the other. I want all of it. And so that is the second reason why financial freedom and achieving that financial freedom is so important to us. And then third is I want to live on my terms. And specifically what I mean by that is um, I work with a lot of individuals and 
they're a little bit older than me and, and approaching retirement years and things of that nature. And one of the consistent themes that I kind of hear is that if I would have set up and did things a little bit better when I was younger, I would be able to retire or I would be able to do that dream job or I would be able to live here, but I can't because I still need to solidify and get my foundation together in some sense. Uh, the one that you, that, that, that is, is most prevalent that I always hear is, you know, my son, my child, my daughter got into this great college, but I didn't prepare enough for, for them to go to that college and I need to continue working for another two, three years in order to put them through the college in order so that they can have a great first step into life. And so you will see that a lot of things that my wife and I do is trying to put together plans in order to not have to adjust our lives based off of successes or things that our children do or our child as of right now. We only have one child right now. Uh, does. We don't want to have to continue going to work if our son gets into a good school or we don't want to have to, you know, pick up extra hours, quote unquote, if our son gets married and we need to help him with his wedding, our ideas and, and, and our concepts is to, to use all the energy that we have now while we're young, while we have time. And let's put money into these accounts to, and get those accounts start to move. And so that in 10, 15 years, those accounts are really growing on their own and no longer really growing by the, the, the blood, sweat and tears of Alex and Aaron. And so that is really why financial freedom is so important to us and why we are achieving financial freedom. So now I want to talk to you about what you can expect through through this whole process um, if you so decide to choose to, to, to hang with us. And so, again, please hit that subscribe button. Um, join us in this journey. Get your notepad out. Start looking over your financials so that you can come along with us along this journey. But the first thing that I'm going to be doing on a monthly basis, and this is basically going to be the last trading day of every single month, I'm going to be doing an overview of all of our accounts. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how much money we put into these accounts, uh, how the values went up or down, and then overall just talk about maybe some concepts of things that are going on in the market at that particular time, uh, whatever that may be, because the market is always having some type of topic or discussion that can be brought up. And so on a, on a monthly basis, we're going to be going over and looking at our accounts. And, and what this is really doing is, and what I hope this does for you, because this is the number one thing that allowed me to get out of debt, is I hope that this starts uh, initiating that thought process and whatnot in your household so that then you can start looking over your accounts and start seeing and tracking where you are on a monthly basis. Because again, this does have some of the skill set that I learned in getting out of debt, and I'm hoping and seeing if it parlays over into reaching financial freedom. The second thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing uh, videos on, on our successes and our failures along the way. So, again, if you've been watching the channel, one of the things that I'm going to be doing here shortly is we actually just hit a financial uh, a financial goal a, a financial trophy is what I what I call it and that is where um, our personal brokerage account hit a hundred thousand dollars and so that was a, a goal of ours at the beginning of the year and so we're going to be oh, there's an item if you haven't seen I'm gonna leave it out and you'll see when I buy it uh, in the video we're going to be purchasing that item out of our brokerage account money, and that is a financial trophy. Uh, again, if you're not familiar and this is the first time to this channel, you'll hear me talk many of times on financial trophies along the way in order to just give ourselves some uh, excitement, something to work for. And then once we reach those goals, giving us a, 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 a trophy for overcoming the challenges that we had to face. The third thing is, and this is going to be a little bit more on you, the community, and I hope this really bonds and, and grows into something, but I would like to build a community and, and, and have live sessions. I would like to, you know, come together on a, on a bi-weekly basis, on a weekly basis, whatever the case may be, and just have discussions on where everyone is at. Let's have a conversation. Let's have uh, Q&As. Let's have... Uh, again, successes and, 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 and failures that others are feeling, are feeling so that we can lean on each other in order to be successful. And then finally, the fourth thing, and this is for everyone that, that takes this, this journey seriously, you can expect us to win. 
us, us, but then also us as a community. You can expect us to win. Um, I am, I am looking forward and I'm going after this. And so it might take a little bit longer than expected, but I am going down as a champion, which is why I have that picture there. And again, I hope you come along for the ride and, and hit that subscribe button and really grow uh, with us because this is going to be uh, growth as as individuals, as families. Uh, in order to reach those millionaire status and whatnot, you have to develop into a new person. And so I really hope that uh, you you understand what you're walking yourself into, but then also uh, be prepared for, for, for the excitement and the joy that you're going to be seeing as you move along the way and you start uh, 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 getting your financial trophies uh, uh, along the way. And so let's start talking about calculations and, and, and what we are currently doing. Uh, I'm going to pull up an investment calculator here in just a minute and kind of run some numbers by you so that you can see. But I wanted to just share with you the, the, the investments that we are making at this current state. So in our uh, main brokerage account, which is our our, 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 our Chase uh, brokerage account, we put about $3,800 a month into that uh, ETF portfolio. It is strictly ETFs. At this current stage in my life, all, uh, all we invest in is ETFs, nothing else. In our IRAs and our 401ks, uh, my wife and I do about $400 a month. Um, it, it averages out it's, it's for me on that IRA to about $500 a month somewhere during the year because I put in extra money to reach my, my goal of 6000 or my limit of $6,000 that the IRA gives you as of right now. But I guarantee to put in 400 and then again, some point along the year, I'll make up that last $1,200 and get that $1,200 in so that then I have a, a complete total of $6,000. My wife has a 401k match, so her company puts in additional funds to help her match, um, or, or, or yeah, match her contributions along the way. We also do, uh, and this is fairly recent, and I'm trying to figure out a way to increase this uh, significantly. We do about $500 a month. Not about, we do do $500 a month in the cryptos. And so, again, I'll be sharing with you some of the cryptos that I'm involved in, uh, some of the cryptos that we really like. And then finally, for our son, Elliot, we do a $100 custodial account, which is somewhat along the lines, uh, if you remember at the beginning of the uh, video where I discussed about wanting to set something up for him so that when he goes to college, uh, we have funds that are prepared for them. He wants a or he needs a car, a, a wedding, a down payment for a house. We want to have a... a capital that we can pull from and get ready to use at the time of need. Not only do we do this, I didn't really add this in uh, to here, but we do also do a, uh, I was about to say a HSA. Well, we do do a HSA, but that's not on a uh, fire number, but a um, 529. We do a 529 for Elliot where we put money away, uh, which is strictly for college, uh, college fund. Uh, but I didn't add that into this for um, just wanting to keep it financially free from numbers and not really, um, Additional, additional things. My computer is going to die on me. I'm sorry. So, uh, that just gives a, a brief overview of the finances that we're doing. And then now I want to share with you how we are going to be reaching financial freedom number. I don't know why this always happens when I'm halfway through. All right, so I want to lay out some parameters and how all this came about. At the beginning of January of this year, January 2021, we put in $50,000 into the market. Okay. Um, I'm going to put here 30 years. I don't believe it's going to take us 30 years to reach our financial freedom number, but this is just going to give us a nice and then we can look up and see where the number falls into place. I am very confident that our particular portfolio can produce 18% a year, especially over the long term, especially when you factor in um, reinvesting the dividends, things of that nature. I'm very confident with the ETFs and things that we select, we can reach that $1,500, or excuse me, that 18% compounded interest year over year. Now, what I do for mine, as you recall, let's add up some numbers here. We were 3800 
plus 800 for retirement plus 500 for cryptos and then 100 for Elliot. So we put in roughly about $5,200 a month on in investments. Now for this calculation and whatnot, I do not want to add in any retirement. So I'm going to minus out the $800 because uh, retirement, of course, is not till we can reach 60, 60, 62. I have to ask my wife. She, she's the financial planner out of us two. Uh, and shout out to her because she actually just passed her CFP on Monday, which was yesterday. And so uh, we are a household full of joy because we get our wife slash mom back because she's not studying no more. And she passed a test that uh, is really hopefully going to open up a lot of doors to her. So shout out to her. Uh, I'll see if she watches this video or uh, someone else has to tell her about this channel. But anyways, um, so we do about $4,400 a month. I like to go a little bit uh, conservative on these. So I'm only going to put $3,500 a month in, in contribution just in case one month comes up, something happens where we can't meet that $4,400. I never like to run this on perfect because as many of you guys might know, perfect doesn't always happen. And so I like to go, again, a little bit conservative, which is taking a bet basically $900 off. So if we do 18%, 3,500, we personally started at $50,000 a year. We're going to get a calculation as to what this account is going to be after 30 years. Our actual fire number is $2.5 million. How we got to $2.5 million is basically on the premise that we want to live on $100,000 a year. And so in order to live on $100,000 a year at a 4% pool rate, we need to have an account that is valued at $2.5 million. And so another way that you can do this, you can play with it in a multitude of different ways, but you can take the, the amount of annual income that you would like divided by 0.04, which is 4%, and that's going to give you $2.5 million. If you want to live off of 250, divide by 0.04, that's going to be $6.25 million. The other thing that you can also do is have a higher pull rate. So, for instance, our 100000 divided by, let's say, a 6% pull rate. As you'll see, the amount of money that we need now reduces it down to $1.66 million or $1.67 million. So, depending on the pull rate that you would like to use can significantly help you bring that account down and make it easier to achieve. But I want you to keep this in mind that if you bring that account down and you have a larger pool rate, that does mean that you need to be able to year after year hit over whatever your pool rate is. So, again, if you notice our pool rate and what we're using is a 4 percent pool rate but our interest rate or our compounded rate is going to be around 18 percent. So we have a spread there because, again, not every year is going to get 18 percent. Some years it's going to get 12. Some years it might even get 6 to 8 percent. Other years it might get 22, 23 percent. And so we always want to have a benchmark, again, for me, conservative, something that I know that we can do year after year, no matter what, so that we never have to touch the principal. So again, once we get to that two and a half million dollars, I never ever for the rest of my life want to go below two and a half million dollars. And I am very confident at a 4% pull rate that we would never go under that two and a half million dollars. Therefore, therefore, we will never be touching our actual principal and only living off of the interest. So again, when you have a moment, pull out a calculator. Again, I'm going to just do this so that you can follow. 100,000 is the annual uh, wage that we would like to receive. And then you're going to divide it by 0.04 uh, for a 4% pull rate. If you want an 8% pull rate, 0.08. If you want a 10% pull rate, 0.1. Um, whatever pull rate you would like to do, it equals, and that's how much money you're going to need for your particular net worth, or excuse me, not your net worth. I did not mean to say that. That is the particular number that you're going to need for your FIRE number. So $2.5 million. So let's hit the... Calculate here. I look at this. This is really nice. If we did 3,500 for 30 years at 18%, by the end of that, we'll have $43 million. Oof, that's a lot of cash. That's a lot of cash. But, um, why is it not? Let's look for two and a half, the end balance. So as you can see here, in year 13, we're at $2.3 million, and at year 14, we're at $2.8 million. So somewhere between this 13 and 14 year, 13 and a half, let's call it, we will technically hit our financial freedom number 
and therefore be able to say um, that we can honestly retire um, financially free. Uh, excuse me. We no longer have to um, be worried and, and or now the decisions that we want to make to go forward financially can have a uh, much different understanding and, and reasoning behind it because now we understand that we have built enough net worth or enough uh, investments that we can live off of $100,000 a year in income. Now, of course, Come in 13 years, if we want to increase that, that means that we need to allow that account to get a little bit bigger and or we can still re retire, but maybe we live off of sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 and leave that kind of remaining to kind of push that account to the uh, amount that we needed to get to in order to have a bigger pool rate. Whatever the case may be, that's a little bit different and that's also down the road once we have already reached our financial freedom number. And so that is... Um, our financial freedom number, that is roughly how much time it's going to take at the current um, allotments that we have. So I am at the current stage trying to find ways in order to increase our monthly contribution so that we can get more dollars into the investment account, uh, therefore reducing the amount of time it takes in order to uh, reach our financial freedom number. But 13 years from where I am, if we can do that, that is going to be a, a very, very well. Um, and, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind, especially for us and for those that are young that are going to be going along this journey with us. If you do have a retirement account, if you recall, I took that $800 out of that monthly contribution. We are still doing $800 a month every single month uh, along this journey. And so come retirement, yes, the, uh, what, am I, what I'm trying to say is this has us stopping at, at 43 or somewhere around 43 to 45 will hit our financial freedom number. We are going to be having retirement money there, that's there sitting on the side. So come by the age of 59 to 62, whatever number that is, we will also get an additional pot of money that then can allow our pull rate or excuse me, our, our net income um, over an annual basis to also grow because now we have new money and a new pot that we can also pull from. So it is not the end of the world if you are doing both accounts at the same time. However, though, uh, you just have to understand that one account is not going to be active until you get to that retirement, that true retirement age. So finally, let's start looking at some of our investments accounts and where we currently are. So I like to So I would like to show you our Chase Brokerage account. This has the majority and the main uh, source of all of our income. And so currently we are at 101,59987 as of November 11th, uh, November 9th. The next accounts that we have is my particular uh, retirement, which is Next, we have my retirement as well as my son's brokerage account, and that's going to be a total of $12,823.12. 12 .12. The reason I have that covered is because that has accounts numbers, and I just don't want that to be shown uh, at this current time. But um, it's three accounts there. It is my, my son's custodial account, and then I have a Roth, and I have a traditional IRA, and that adds up to $12,000. Next thing I want to show you is a Coinbase account, which holds some crypto, Cardano, Chainlink, Polkadot are the three that I'm heavily involved with uh, minor, minor stuff, six cents, three cents, uh, penny somewhere, Yeshiba, of uh, other just random coins, which you'll see is on the Coinbase Pro side. So 640104. And then finally, let's go to Coinbase Pro. And this has another 27, 26, 22. So what happened? 120, 824, 03 plus 27, 26. So as you can see right now, we have uh, basically 123. Oh, no, 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 my wife. I wrote it down. So the reason I can't pull up my wife is because it's with her company. My wife has 
48,526 80 in her uh, 401k. So as we sit for here today, uh, we are somewhere around $170,000 in all assets. Now again, um, 10,000 and 48,000 of that money right there is retirement money and therefore it's not truly going to be added and when I do the monthly reviews and whatnot I have a nice spreadsheet that I break down everything so that then you can really see that and how all of the accounts are broken out too uh, but this is where we're starting as of today so again I hate to be a broken record but I hope you you join us in our journey to financial freedom I hope you come along I hope you subscribe to the channel and I look forward to uh, growing with you as a community and can't wait to uh, achieve this milestone together. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you on the next video.